want to bring in CNN's Richard Quest, who was actually, uh, coincidentally, has been shooting a story on the airline and has spent time with the airline's uh, CEO. Uh, this is obviously, I mean, there, we don't know exactly what's happened to this yeah. plane, but but it is, I mean, mysterious that some two hours into the plane, we were talking during the break, you were saying that this is the safest time of the flight. Yes, according to what we know so far, and everything that you and I now say must be caveated with it, it's early days, but it was a, an hour and something into the flight. Now, this would be classed as the cruise uh, portion of the flight. You break down the flight into taxi, take off, climb out, and then cruise. And so in that particular point of the flight, this is the safest part. Mm -hmm. Nothing is supposed to go wrong if at all uh, in this part the aircraft is on autopilot the pilots are making minor correction and changes for height as the plane burns off fuel the plane will be uh, going higher and higher so this is extremely serious it's always serious obviously but that it should have happened at this point in the flight whatever had happened whenever contact has been lost uh, that may that will make this a much more serious matter in that sense as to what happened it wasn't taking off it wasn't landing and I, I have not been on Malaysian Airlines for uh, probably 20 years or so what, what is as a company how is it I mean the oh, safety record there all the is modern it, fleet absolutely the, the plane that we're talking about I believe it's the aircraft the 777-200 Malaysian Airlines only has a uh, triple seven two hundreds not the 300 which is the longer aircraft physically longer aircraft they have the older fleet the average age of the Malaysian Airline 777 fleet is about, oh, 14 years, 14.2 years, not particularly old, not particularly young. This particular aircraft, if it's the one that we believe it is that's been involved in this incident, was delivered in 19, uh, it was 11.8 years old, delivered in the late 1990s. It had two Rolls-Royce Trent engines on it. It was delivered in 2002, there, thereabouts, so it's not a particularly old aircraft. Malaysia has 15 777-200s in the fleet, extremely experienced operator of this type of aircraft. And is this owned by, by the government of Malaysia? Yes, well, it's, a, it's an odd hybrid form of ownership. The government, uh, the part of the float of the shares is in the private sector, part of it is, uh, is with the government. The government clearly owns the majority. So yes, it is a government, it is a national carrier of Malaysia. A carrier that's undergoing all sorts of transformation and reform and restructuring at the moment. The chief executive having to make it profitable once again. At its last set of results just earlier this year, they lost several hundred million. So it's a carrier that's in transition, mm. none of which would affect safety, sure. I have to tell you. It also, by the way, Malaysia also has uh, six A380s in the fleet as well. Well, we've just gotten word that the, uh, the airline is apparently contacting um, uh, rel next of kin uh, for those on board the aircraft, 239 people, 12 of those uh, crew members aboard the aircraft. Again, we do not know what has, what has taken place with this aircraft. As I looked at the, uh, the, the, the flight radar track of this aircraft on its route from, uh, fr from Malaysia up to Beijing. Beijing. Now, we believe it's over Vietnam Reuters where this incident happened, yeah. but it could just be a little bit further over, almost to the coast of China.